Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to resize Microsoft Access Forms for different screen sizes and resolutions using something called anchoring. Today's question comes from Brennan in Cork, Ireland, one of my Platinum members. Brennan says, I have three different devices that I use my database on. I have my normal desktop PC in my office. I have a travel laptop that's got a much smaller screen. I also like to log on remotely using remote desktop software to check things from my cell phone. I built three different sets of forms for each of these devices, but it's a pain having to update them. Every time I make a change to one, I've got to change all three. Isn't there a way you can stretch or resize forms to fit the available screen space? Well, Brennan, you'd think that Microsoft Access would allow you to stretch or zoom in and out of forms like you can in Word and Excel and PowerPoint and most other applications, but you can't do it in Microsoft Access. Like I always say, Access is literally the red-headed stepchild of the Microsoft Office family. I mean, they even made the logo red. It used to be purple, now it's red. <laughs> And Access doesn't get a lot of the cool features that most of the other Office applications have. But we can get creative and do stuff our way because you can do pretty much anything in Access. So let me show you a trick called anchoring that you can use to resize your forms and have the controls stretch inside your forms. And later on, we'll talk a little bit about zooming in and out. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you'd like to. And if you have not yet watched the video where I show you how I build this template, go watch that first so you understand how this database is built. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. There's a link. I'll also put a link down below in the description you can click on to go watch this. So go watch this and come back if you haven't already. Okay, so when I open a form like the customer form, if I stretch the form, everything in the form stays put. It doesn't move, all right? It'd be nice if I can stretch this guy out, maybe have these fields get a little bit larger, especially the notes field, all right? So if you're on a bigger screen, you can stretch it out and see more stuff on the screen. Now, in Access Forms, there's something called anchoring, and by default, everything is anchored to the top left corner of the form. So this control, this control, this box, these buttons, they're anchored to their position that you set them in relative to the upper left corner of the form, but you can change that anchoring, which will allow them to move around. So let's go into design view. Now, just to keep things simple, I'm gonna delete this second column of stuff, and I'm gonna delete this and these fields here, just for now, just to keep things simple and basic. I want everything to be pretty standard and uniform. I'll show you some more tricks and techniques in a little bit. Okay, let's move these guys over here like that and shrink this in like so. Okay, now keep in mind, everything is still anchored in the upper left-hand corner. Let me save this, Control-S, close that down, open it. All right, our form got a little simpler. Now, if I resize it, you can see everything still stays put. Now, let's say I want to put one of these buttons down here in the bottom right corner. And if I move the form boundary, I want that button to stay with it. So what I want to do is I'm going to anchor the order button to the bottom right corner of the form. Let's see how we do that. Go to Design View. Now we're going to use a tab up here that I almost never use, the Arrange tab. And I went through and I checked. I have not covered this in any of my classes. Because when I recorded my initial beginner series, this feature didn't exist yet. And after they added it, I was already well into the developer material. And I never went back and covered it. So I'm covering this for the first time for you guys. I'm going to sneak it into my beginner series somewhere. I'm re-recording the beginner series right now. But anyways, here's the Arrange tab. Now these guys are mostly grayed out until you select something. So let's select the order button and notice how this stuff lights up, okay? I'm gonna slide the order button down. Let's, let's put it down here in the bottom right corner, like right there, okay? Sit it nice and pretty right there, click on it. Now, here's anchoring, all right, drop that down. And you can see there's a bunch of different options in here. Top left is the default. Everything by default is top left. Let's pick bottom right and see what happens. Bottom right. Okay, now we're going to save our form, we're going to close it and open it back up again. Now watch this, resize the form. Look at that. The button is anchored to the bottom right corner 
of this form. So as this form resizes, that button's going to stay there. And yeah, you might hide it accidentally if you do something like this, but you can do that with all the fields. All right. So as you make this guy bigger, bigger, it moves with the bottom right corner. Let's do the same thing with the other one. Take the contacts button, slide it down here. Right. Arrange. Anchor. Bottom right. Okay. Save it. Close it. Open it up. And now both of those guys will move with the bottom right corner. See that? Pretty cool. Okay, so let's take these guys now and let's slide them under here. There's orders and there's contact. Okay, like that. Now keep in mind, they're still anchored bottom right. So if I move this now, it's going to look like that, which is okay. All right, but what about these text boxes? Now I want the text boxes to stay anchored to the upper left. But if I resize this form horizontally, I'd like these guys to stretch more to the right. That'd be kind of cool, right? I could see more data in each of these fields. How do we do that? Well, let's go back to design view. Let's select all of these. Okay, just the text boxes, not the labels. Go to arrange, go to anchoring. And we're going to pick stretch across top. Okay, now they still stay anchored in the upper left corner, but save it, close it, open it back up again. Now watch what happens. If I slide this to the right, look at that. They stretch across the top. Okay, that's pretty cool, right? Let's see what the other options do. Design view. Again, select these guys. Go to anchoring. All right. Stretch down and across. Save that. Close it. This is what you do if you want them to also resize vertically. See that? Now, they're going to overlap each other. So usually you'll only do that with like one field. I'll give you a notes field on the bottom of that. So we don't want that option. And the other option for stretching here, all right, arrange, anchoring, stretch across the bottom, save it, close it, open it. What that does is it anchors them to the bottom, so they'll slide down, okay? You could do that if you had like a, a couple of fields below your notes field that was in the middle, for example, okay? So for these guys, I'm going to do... Anchor. I keep wanting to go over here, but it, have to remember to click on arrange first. Anchoring, stretch across top. Okay. And remember, there is no turning anchoring off. Anchoring is always on. It's just the default is the upper left corner. Okay. Okay. Let's add city and state back in. Whoops. Clicked on that too soon. Let's add city or uh, add state and zip code back in here. So I'm going to slide city, make it a little smaller like that. All right. Let's go back to our existing fields let's find state and zip code and bring those guys back to the party i'm going to delete the labels that they come in with slide state right there and we'll put zip code right next to it like we did before okay there we go all right save it close it open it back up again and they're not quite exactly in the right spots where i want them let me design that again yeah they're not uh not quite snap to the grid. Right click and then size to grid. There we go. All right. Save it. Close it. Open it back up. Okay. Now, see that they came in a little bit from the left. That's because of the anchoring. Now, these guys are sitting right where you left them. But look, the, the city behind it is stretching. So we don't want that. What I want, though, is I want the state and zip code to move to the right all right, stay your current size, but move to the right if I resize. So the city field can get bigger, but these guys, I want to stay the same size. All right, so how do we do that? So we're going to select these two guys, okay? And then for their anchoring, we're going to set them to top right. So they're anchored to the top right corner, and they'll move, but they won't resize. Okay, save that, close it. Open it back up again, and now resize. And see that? These guys are anchored to the top right corner. So as the right side moves, they move. Okay, but they won't go down. Okay. Let's bring back our notes field. And this time, let's do this with the notes field. Let's, uh, let's set all these guys back to default anchoring. So we're going to go back in here, go to anchoring top left set them back where they were supposed to be 
Okay, let's bring our notes field back in. Add existing fields, and then notes is right there. I'll get rid of you. I'll slide you up here. Maybe bring that down like so. Let's bring these buttons back over this way. Slide this like that. And of course, we'll give our notes a little splash of color. Okay. Save it. Close it. Open it up. Here's what we got. Very similar to the original one, except I still got these guys floating down. Now, let's make this notes field get bigger as the form gets bigger. Okay. Design view. Click on notes. Arrange. Anchoring. Stretch down and across. So it can go downwards and to the right, which is what you'd want for a notes field. All right, save it, close it, open it back up again. And now look, your notes field can get as big as you want it to be to fit that screen. Okay, see how that works? Or you can also do something similar to what I did in the title slide here. I put the notes field below these guys. If you want these text boxes to also slide open to the right, you can do that. Put the notes field down here. Okay, and then also anchor it so it slides down and to the right. Okay. That would just be something like this. You just take your notes field. And you can start these off small. I recommend make your form as small. Let's do it like this. Let's put this over here. Make it as small as it needs to be to fit your smallest screen, right? And then you can always resize it and make it larger for bigger screens. Like, so if this is your small guy... Right, fit this so it fits maybe on your cell phone. Okay, save this. And now, when you open it up, if you want to make it bigger, it gets bigger. Okay, and you can also apply that anchoring back on these guys. Right, this one, actually, let's select these. And then I'm going to hold down the shift, click, click. Okay, these guys were anchoring, stretch across top. And these two are anchoring top right. Save it, close it, and now this is what your form will do. See? These guys slide to the right. These guys all resize as well as the notes field. That's the beauty of anchoring. Now, this is one of the rare exceptions where I actually think if you're going to do stuff like this and you want the screens to automatically resize, you can use the tabbed interface that I, I really I hate using it. I almost never use it. But... The tabs, the st they start forms maximized like this, and you got tabs across the top. If you like that, go ahead and use it. I personally don't. But what you could do, if you want this form to open maximized, or any form, really, it's one line of VBA code. Just one. It's do command to maximize. You want me to show it to you? You ready for the bonus round? You ready for some bonus material? Okay, I'll show you how to do it. Now, if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It's Intro to VBA. It teaches you all the basics, everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA. Don't be scared of it. It's easy. I show you how to do everything step by step. For this example, we literally need one line of code. As most things I show with VBA, it's one, maybe two lines of code to do really cool stuff. Okay, but you got to know where to put that one line of code. So I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so I want this form to maximize itself when it opens. Now, there's two places you could put this line of code. You could put it in the button that opens it. If you want this button to open it and then maximize it, you put the code in the button like this. Design view. Right, let me turn this field list off. Right click on the button. Go to build event. That opens up the code builder. Okay, right here is the customer form button click. It's going to do command open the form. And then you just say do command dot maximize. That's it. Save it. Close the editor. Close the form. All right. Open your main menu back up. Click the form. And boop. It opens the form and then issues a maximize command. That's pretty cool. Right? Another way to do it is, let me take that out of there. Design view. Right click. Build event. You get out of here. Control Y. See ya. Save it. Close it. Okay. If you open the customer form from many different locations, or even maybe even from the navigation pane itself, and you don't want to have to put that maximize command in a bunch of different buttons, you could tell the form itself to maximize itself once it opens. 
and that's called the on open event. There's two events. There's on open and there's on there's on load and on open. Two events, very similar to each other. There are some differences, but we're not going to talk about them now. So pick either one. Here's on open. I'll use that one. All right. Dot dot dot. This is the form open event. So this is going to run every time this form opens. What are you going to tell it to do? Do command dot maximize. Same thing. So when you open Mr. Customer form, maximize yourself. Okay. Save it. Close the editor. Close the form. Open it up again. Boop. And it maximizes itself. Isn't that cool? All right. And then we can restore it back down and close it. And there you go. Let's take a look at one more example of anchoring. Let's take a look at the customer list. I like anchoring a lot, especially with um, with list type forms, like uh, like a, a continuous form like this. Now, the, the example here is kind of silly with last name. So let's add let's add notes to this. All right, I'm actually going to make this a bit smaller, and we'll slide these over like this. And I kind of want to do it for something in the middle of the list. So let's um let's actually slide these guys over. A bit like that and I'm gonna copy this copy paste and slide these guys let's put this over here and put this right there okay and uh, we're gonna make this say notes we're gonna put the notes right in the center here all right we're gonna change this guy here so that this is notes the control whoop, the control sources notes and don't forget to change the name okay all right, save it, close it, close it, open it up. All right, so we got our notes in the middle here. And we got somebody with long notes in here. We don't have any long notes in here. Let's put some long notes in here. Let's open up Deanna. And I'll just copy some stuff off my website and paste it in there. Okay, got a lot, lot, lot of notes in there for Deanna. Okay, all right, let's close that. And we'll close that. Okay. That's the thing with maximize, by the way. Once you maximize a form, it stays maximized. And if you close that form, the other forms that were open are also maximized. You can make your own buttons like on the bottom down here to navigate through them. I personally hate tabs. I just don't like tabs. If I'm going to do a database like this, I'll build buttons across the form footer to, <laughs> to navigate across whatever forms I want to go to. Because usually from one form, you want to go to a bunch of different places. Not You don't want to have buttons for all of your different forms open. And I hate it when I've got 15 tabs open across the top. Okay, but anyways, what I'm trying to do is I want to I have it so that these guys stay on the left. These guys stay on the right, and this column here, right, notes, stretches. So, design view. All right, we're going to select these guys, anchoring, stretch across top. These guys, anchoring, top right. Okay, let's just make sure these are sized right. Let's, okay. All right, good. Ready? Save it, close it, open it up. Looks good. And now we resize and ooh, ah, isn't that cool? Okay. That's the benefit of anchoring. And with continuous forms, you just, as you go get bigger, you just see more records. So you don't really have to worry about that. Okay. Okay. Now I mentioned earlier that we would talk about actually zooming in and out of these forms. Now, the anchoring technique that I showed you works well, but it doesn't actually make the fields any bigger as far as the font size and their vertical size for regular, you know, single line text boxes. So if you're working on a bigger display and you want the text to actually get bigger, all right, like your first name, last name fields, you have to actually zoom in and out. So you need zoom in and out features for your forms like this. Now, this is something that does involve a little more VBA programming. And I am going to cover how to do it in the extended cut for the members. I'm going to show you how to make a couple of buttons on any form that you can click on them and make the form bigger or smaller. It'll resize the controls on the form and it'll make the font sizes larger and smaller as well. And so if you got something like the customer list form, you can zoom in to the actual form itself and make the fields and the text in those fields bigger. So if you got people who have a hard time seeing some of the stuff on those really, really small forms, you can zoom in or you can zoom out. You can make them smaller. All right. Either way. So again, that's covered in the extended cut for silver members and up.
I would also like to give honorable mention to the Shrinker Stretcher by Peter's Software. When I was doing my research for this video, I came across this, and I actually downloaded his trial and gave it a shot, and it works really well. So if you don't want to have to bother with programming this yourself, he's got some stuff you can just drop into your database, and it you can just stretch stuff. Here's a screenshot right here, right? It just, it just works. You don't have any programming to do. If you don't want to mess with it, you just want to be able to stretch your forms, I would strongly recommend getting Peter's Software's Shrinker Stretcher. I will put a link to this down below in the description below the video. Check it out. You can download a free copy and test it and see if it works yourself. And it's not that expensive to buy a copy of the actual software itself. Yeah, he's charging like 39 bucks. That's, it's a steal. Or if you want to learn how to do it yourself using some VB code, you can come in and become a member and check out the extended cut. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, one of the nice things about Shrinker Stretcher is that Peter's software, uh, it'll automatically adjust based on the resolution of your monitor, too. All right, so if you load up the database and it sees that you're on a big screen, it'll automatically stretch the form for you. Mine doesn't. I'm just going to show you how to make a little zoom in, zoom out buttons. So you have to do it manually. But his will. Yeah, and I, yeah I could figure out how to do that. I, I toyed around with it a little bit, but it's a lot of work. I would rather just use Peter's software myself if that's what you want. You want it to automatically stretch the size of your screen. Also, I do want to mention, I just released a template myself where you could set up different form profiles for the different forms in your database based on screen size. So for example, you can set up, it's the same form, but you can have a large screen version, a regular version, and then like a cell phone version of the same form. They're just different profiles. So if you're interested in that, check out this video. I walk you through it, explain how it works, and it's pretty cool. So that's your tech help for today. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped somebody. Come and check out the extended cut for the Silver Members and Up. And remember, Silver Members and Up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's hundreds of them now. And Gold Members and Above can download these databases. Plus, Gold Members get access to the Code Vault with lots of cool stuff in it. So sign up. Become a member today. I'm Richard Ross, and I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1.
Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.